Just like a fella said, I'm a fucking city, nigga. I love you, yeah. That's not enough proof. <clears throat> Seen plenty of people on the football field, basketball field, smacking up a baby. Hey, I'm ready now. Wake up, wake up, somebody's setting your back. Somebody's setting your back. What is up, YouTube? How y'all doing? Yeah. 50 Cent leaks new freak off footage of Jay-Z and Beyonce. Lord have mercy, man. Come on. I hope they dragging Jay-Z in this stuff, man. He he ain't said nothing yet. Um, <clears throat> And 50 Cent, I don't know. I, I really think <clears throat> I really think everybody is in on it. I think everybody is in on it. So let's get, let's stir up the world for a little while. And we're going to put this stuff out there and, and wait three or four months. And then you answer. And then everybody be moved on to something different. I don't know, man. I, I can't, I can't even imagine this crap. But without any further ado, y'all hit that subscribe button, hit that bell. I'm ready to see some proof in that no bull. This is all bull Photoshop on Facebook. They got all these pictures. Uh, they don't even care to make the, the, the Photoshop stuff look real right. It look all fake now. Come on, man. Let's check it out. <laughs> Look at my mom, she's real quick. Be kind. <laughs> Leave that one bigger. Be fearless. Let's go celebrate. Just like a fella said, I'm a fucking city, nigga. I love New York. That's not enough proof. <clears throat> Seen plenty of people on the football field, basketball field, smack another dude on his butt, whatever the case may be. That's not enough 50 proof. 50 Cent is on a nonstop trolling spree aimed at Diddy. And he just dropped a video that seems to suggest Jay-Z was involved in Diddy's wild parties. We all know Diddy and Jay are tight, because not too long ago, Diddy spilled the beans in an interview, saying only his mom and Jay-Z can call him Sean. Diddy's website, Combs Global, still proudly features a pic of him and Jay showing off their bromance. But now, is 50 Cent hinting that maybe Diddy and Jay were more than just buddies at some point? Or is Jay keeping mum on Diddy's claims because he's got some secrets in his own closet. Ever since the news dropped that Cassie is suing Diddy for all sorts of messed up stuff, including sketchy encounters with male workers, <clears throat> 50 mm. has been spilling all the dirty deets about Diddy. Man, 50 Cent has been riding Diddy's case for months now. Even before all the drama with Cassie, the other accusers, and the revolt exit, 50's been on this wild ride, showing no mercy whatsoever. Yeah. Now, with all these sexual assault allegations hitting Diddy, 50's still not letting up. He hit up social media to roast Diddy, who's now caught up in his third sexual assault lawsuit in a month. 50 mm. pulled a weird move, blending Diddy and R. <clears throat> Kelly's faces in a Twitter pic, and even threw in R. Kelly's 1998 jam, Did You Ever Think, for that extra spice. The caption went on to say, Did he do it? Coming soon. Greenlight gang and another one. Not stopping there, 50 Cent took his thoughts to Instagram to spill even more tea on Diddy's legal mess. No, he will be fine. He has so much money. When his corporate partners pull out, 
He will just reach in his pockets and make it happen. Mm. You saw how fast he paid Cassie. He's a real billionaire. He has FU money, guys. So FU. Did he do it? Coming soon. These 50 cent bombshells came right after page mm. six spilled the beans about G unit films and television cooking up a TV special G about the bad boy records bigwig. Mm. Hinting at some TV project in the works, 50 casually dropped the page six link on Friday, proudly calling himself the top dog producer for the gig. In his latest Insta post, he tossed up a clip of Eddie Griffin cracking jokes about Diddy. Griffin takes a swipe at Diddy's long-standing feud with Shuge Knight, who's currently doing time behind bars. That nigga on his way to jail, Shuge Knight, there waiting on him. <laughs> <laughs> Shuge Knight waiting on him. Silly dancing in your videos. All up on sale block scene dancing and shit. Come on over to death row, baby. <laughs> also went on to say this on his twitter page rapper i thought diddy was a billionaire music mogul if he's smart he will file bankruptcy now anyone with real money knows why i'm saying this i'm the best producer for the job guys here come the receipts mm. now 50 hasn't flat out said if he's really cooking up a documentary about the accusations circling Diddy. Instead, he's soaking in the chaos. When the news dropped about Diddy stepping back from revolt, the company dished out a statement to NBC News. Wow. Trying to spin it like it's all about keeping revolt focused on creating meaningful content for the culture and amplifying the voices of all black people throughout this country and the African diaspora, as per their statement. Now, 50 Cent is even roping Jay-Z into the drama making it sound like Diddy and Jay share more than meets the eye. By the way, 50 and Jay-Z have been beefing for over two decades, and at one point, 50 accused Jay of buying his way to the top. Mm. But Jay and Diddy go back quite a bit. They've been in trouble back, and they are in trouble right now. Let's see what happened back in the day, and later, we'll focus more on the present trouble that is coming their way. Mm. Back in 2019, Diddy threw a mega 50th birthday bash at his Beverly Hills mansion, Attended by A-list stars like Kim Kardashian, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kanye West, Kevin Hart, Beyonce, and Jay-Z. It's a far cry from the gritty days Jay-Z and Combs faced in New York City two decades ago, particularly in December of that year. Back then, both found themselves in situations that could have derailed their careers and landed them in prison. Mm. Diddy's arrest on weapons and bribery charges, involving an incident that left three injured, was a major headline at the time. It gained even more attention because his then girlfriend, Jennifer Lopez, was also arrested. Wow. Meanwhile, the memory of Jay-Z's involvement in a stabbing has faded over time, thanks to his transformation into a social justice activist and one half of the influential power couple in music with Beyonce. For Jay and Puff, the arrest brought on the decision of, am I going to shed the pretenses of the streets said Dan Charnas, mm. author of The Big Payback. Mm. These incidents also had a lasting impact on society, triggering changes in the NYPD and establishing the notion that rap was too big a money game to play in the streets. Mm. In the 90s, success in hip hop was about artistic bragging rights and being the realist, noted industry expert star Rhett Rocket. Now success in hip hop is, how mainstream can I go? Wow. The late 90s marked a turning point for hip-hop as it surpassed pop culture, overtaking even country music. However, as the industry became more lucrative, artists felt compelled to prove themselves, not just artistically, but by living the street life. In 1998, Busta Rhymes got arrested for possessing a loaded, unregistered pistol. The what? following year, DMX faced charges after officers found a gun and drug paraphernalia at his NJ home. Slick Rick and ODB from the Wu-Tang Clan served time at Rikers in the 90s, mm. while Shug Knight pleaded no contest to assault. Violence wasn't just accepted, it was almost expected. <clears throat> wow. On December 2nd, 1999, the Kit Kat Club in Midtown was buzzing with celebration for rapper Q-Tip. Jay-Z, riding high on the success of his album Vol 2 Hard Knock Life, okay. was also there. Tensions flared when Jay-Z and his crew encountered Lance Un Rivera a producer who had allegedly distributed bootlegs of Jay-Z's unreleased album, reportedly mm. saying, Lance, 
you broke my heart. Jay-Z pulled an eight-inch knife, leading to a confrontation where members of Jay-Z's crew beat Rivera with liquor bottles. Rivera suffered shoulder and abdominal injuries and was taken to St. Vincent's Hospital in stable condition. Mm. Jay-Z turned himself in that night, facing two charges of first-degree assault. If convicted, he could have faced up to 15 years in prison. Jay was defending his honor, explained Roque regarding the stabbing, but Jay-Z had everything to lose if he continued down that path. You got that right. If unbootlegged your <clears throat> album, there are lawyers to deal with that. You don't deal with that, Charnas emphasized. That was the headspace he had to get out of. A few mm. weeks later, on December 27th, Diddy and Jennifer Lopez were partying at Club New York with his protege, Jamal Shine Barrow. It's crucial to highlight Diddy's influence at the time. His Bad Boy Records empire was raking in $130 million annually. He had launched the successful Sean John fashion line the year before and hosted the first of his star-studded white parties in the Hamptons. Mm. Two years mm. earlier, his I'll Be Missing You became the first rap track to debut atop the Billboard Hot 100. While leaving the Times Square Club, Combs clashed with a man named Matthew Scar Allen, resulting in a fight and shots fired, leaving three injured. Diddy and Jay Lowe, driving his Lincoln, were arrested after running a light. A gun was found in the car, and the couple, along with bodyguard Anthony Wolf Jones and Barrow, were taken into custody. Retired NYPD mm. detective Derek Parker witnessed the high-profile arrest, remembering, there were all these high-profile lawyers barricaded in the station house, waiting to talk to the desk officer. They had J. Lo handcuffed to a pole. Lopez was quickly absolved, but Diddy faced two charges of criminal possession of an unregistered gun and attempted bribery for allegedly trying to get Jones to claim the weapon. Obviously, mm. nobody really wants to be arrested <laughs> or handcuffed or, you know, go through all that kind of stuff. It's a really traumatic experience. Police charged Sean Puffy Combs and Jennifer Lopez with felony gun possession. Mm. Sean was accused of attempted murder and assault. Similar to Jay-Z, Diddy faced up to 15 years in prison. Three months earlier, he had pleaded guilty to a harassment violation in the beating of a music executive, mm. downgraded from the original felony assault charge. The NYPD started noticing an uptick in violence within the hip-hop world. Parker, known as the hip-hop cop, established a specialized unit to address the growing concerns. He explained, Officers would ask me, why has the hip-hop world become so violent? The truth is, mm. the rappers were never the big problem. Most of the time, it was the crew that they kept around them. It was an atmosphere where members of the crew felt like they had something to prove to the artist. However, wow, unlike cool. Jay-Z, Didster had a relatively middle-class upbringing. Puff took on the pretenses of that life, noted Charnas. For Jay, it was more of a reflex that he needed to reckon with because he literally came from that lifestyle. The six-week club New York trial, starting in January 2001, became a media sensation. Represented by Benjamin Brathman and Johnny Cochran, Diddy was acquitted, while Barrow, 21, was convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. Some believe Barrow was a fall guy, and he was eventually deported to Belize after serving nine years. Mr. Sean Combs later dropped the Puff Daddy moniker for P. Diddy in 2001 as part of his reinvention after the arrest. Wow. He is now an entrepreneur with a net worth of $740 million, according to Forbes. Jay-Z pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor assault charge in 2001, receiving three years probation. In his book, Decoded, he revealed that he took the plea fearing prosecutors would come down harder after Combs' acquittal. He now holds the title of hip-hop's first billionaire. 50 found it odd that Jay-Z calls himself Jesus, and back in 2009, he told Rolling Stone that Jay has a king complex, thinking he's some kind of effing Jesus. <clears throat> in that same interview, 50 kinda hinted that Jay betrayed people close to him, like Beanie Siegel from Rockefeller. 50 basically mm. said Jay wasn't looking out for them, just doing his thing for himself. And it's not just 50 throwing shade. Mm. Uncle Ron, who supposedly did mm. a stint as Beyonce's bodyguard, spilled the tea that both Jay and Beyonce wrecked a lot of lives on their way to the top. Mm. Beyonce and Jay-Z will do anything to destroy anyone who speaks out against them. Okay, I get the threats, mm. but you have to remember one thing. 
I know your deepest secrets. Mm. I know so much about you and what you've done. I know so much on how you got where you are, how you stepped on the many people. Beyonce, how you guys ended Carrie Hilson's career because she said something about you. That's how hateful you guys are. How you step on anybody to stay on the top. To remember, wow, your relationship was a business relationship, financial, to get to the top, to be, be to become billionaires. But Uncle Ron also dropped a bomb about Beyonce that fans are saying sounds a lot like what Cassie spilled about Diddy. Yeah, Beyonce's on drugs. She's been on them for a long time and you keep her that way. She's been on them for a long time and you keep her that way. Y'all wish it what you wish it mm. Mm. to stay on top. Mm. But there's one thing about me, bro. I can't be bought. This is Uncle Ron. <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, man, that's crazy. Uh, I, I was going to try to wait to the end, but it's 20 minutes and I'm forgetting what I was going to say on some of these parts, man. But dude, you say you got so many secrets. Let us know one. I mean, put one of them out there or something. That's what I was going to say. Jaguar right through in even more serious claims. <clears throat> this is crazy. That many folks who used to roll with Jay in his inner circle, like Big L, ended up meeting tragic fates. Lots of fans noticed that the way Jaguar talked about Jay-Z is oddly similar to how she and many others describe Diddy. I mean, the list of Diddy's crew, who either kicked the bucket, got sick, or vanished from the scene, is longer than his list of number one records. And just so you know, Kanye once name-dropped both Diddy and Jay, along with Beyonce, when he spilled the beans about celebs being controlled by the Hollywood elites. He claimed he's untouchable because, unlike them, he hasn't offed anyone. They can't control me. You get what I'm saying? They can control Shaq. They can control Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. But not you, man. But they can't control me. Not you see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. Exactly. It's up. Not you. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And just for Minister Farrakhan, I love you. But the way you read that, I took that as a slight. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't take no disrespect from nobody. So let's get on the phone and let's talk that out. Later in the interview, wow. Jaguar also brought up Jay-Z's sketchy relationships like with Foxy Brown, who was just 14 when Jay supposedly started grooming her. And there's Aaliyah, who was allegedly groomed by Jay-Z's pal R. Kelly. By mm. the way, Jay met Beyonce when she was 16 and he was 28. In a 2007 chat with Charlie Rose, Jay claimed they met 10 years prior. So in 1997, Beyonce was either 15 or 16 depending on the month. Adding to the intrigue, there's this long-standing conspiracy theory that Jay-Z had a hand in Aaliyah's demise after she turned down his advances. Dame Dash even spilled that Jay went all out to get with Aaliyah, and supposedly, Jay asked Diddy to help him in the grooming game. So Diddy started inviting wow. Aaliyah to his infamous parties. However, Aaliyah wasn't into Jay and favored Dame. Then, in 2001, tragedy struck when Aaliyah lost her life at 22 in a mysterious plane crash in the Bahamas, the same year Jay went public with Beyonce. On August 25th, 2001, around 6.50 p.m., EDT, Aaliyah and her crew, who had just finished shooting the Rock the Boat video in the Bahamas, hopped on a small twin-engine Cessna 402 at Marsh Harbor Airport. They were heading to Opelika mm. Airport in Florida since they wrapped up filming early and were eager to get back to the U.S. The plane, smaller than the one they arrived in, crashed and caught fire shortly after takeoff, about 200 feet from the end of the runway. Tragically, Aaliyah and the eight others on board, including the pilot Luis Morales III, mm. stylist Eric Foreman and security guard Scott Gallen, lost their lives. The passengers were getting antsy because the plane was supposed to arrive at 4.30 p.m. EDT but showed up at 6.15 p.m. Some heated arguments between the passengers and Morales reportedly took place before takeoff, with Morales warning about the excess weight for a safe flight. Despite his concerns, they insisted on flying to Miami that night. An inquest in the Bahamas revealed that Aaliyah had severe burns, a blow to the head, 
severe shock, and a weak heart. The coroner believed that even if she survived the crash, her injuries were too severe for recovery. The bodies were taken to the morgue in Nassau for identification. Wow, I'm but over some here were in the investigation found that the plane was overloaded by 700 pounds, carrying one more passenger than certified. The National Transportation Safety Board reported that the pilot wasn't approved to fly the plane. Morales had falsely obtained his FAA license and had traces of cocaine and alcohol in his system. He may have also lied about his flying experience to get his job with Black Hawk International Airways. Wow. Now, the reason many folks buy into the industry sacrifice theory for Aaliyah's death mm. is because witnesses claimed she was given a sedative and carried unconscious onto the plane. On top of that, Dame Dash spilled that Jay-Z knew about R. Kelly's misconduct and illegal marriage to Aaliyah when she was just 15. Now, on top of all this, there are whispers going around wow. that Jay-Z and Diddy weren't just into grooming women, but also allegedly involved in all-male escapades. And let's not forget, 50 Cent had a go at Jay before, trolling him for trying to rock the Basquiat look. You know, Basquiat, the artist who swung both ways with both men and women. Uh, that should be going. So you, you, you image yourself after a gay painter. Wow. You want to look like a gay painter. Wow. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Basquiat. He wants to look like a gay painter. Oh, my God. I think I know where we're going with so this. So now, look, what I'm saying to you is, look, when you start looking at... It's, it, that's not mine. That's theirs. They are. People immediately recognized what 50 was doing with this comment of his. One person online said, mm. I love 50's intelligence wittiness, candor, business savviness, humor, and the ability to be truthful and speak facts in a comedic way. And we all know how 50 has been messing with Diddy for years, teasing him about being on the down low. 50 even hinted once that Diddy tried to make a move on him. By the way, Diddy's ex-bodyguard Gene Deal spilled the beans in a recent interview, wow. claiming that those male workers Diddy allegedly forced Cassie to be with were actually meant for him. Now, does this mean Jay-Z and Diddy were teaming up for some wild experiences? Well, it sure seems like that's what 50 is suggesting with his latest post. 50 shared a throwback video of him on stage with Diddy and Jay-Z, capturing Diddy playfully smacking Jay's behind. In the caption, 50 wrote, 20 machine guns, only get 10 months, Diddy in the back, patent on N asterisk 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 S butts. 50 Cent wrote in the caption, referencing T.I.'s 2007 arrest on gun charges. Nah, I ain't with it. I ain't never been with it. Bars LOL. Now, Fitty mm. might just be stirring the pot again, mm. but fans are saying, at the end of the day, you're the company you keep. So the fact that Jay-Z has stayed buddies with Diddy for all these years must mean they have a lot in common. Mm. Nah, I, st I still... Dude... I I still I'm not believing. I can't I can't swallow that, man. I can't sit here and say um it's too many if you go both ways, man. Y'all know it's a lot of men out here in the closet. You know. God dang, fuck it. I I'm coming out the closet. I'm gay. That don't even sound right. Oh, I can't stand dude. There's no way in the world. How can you? <laughs> oh my God, young! Shout out to Fifty Cent, man. I it's I put it to you like this: you got a team of people that's telling, oh, trying their best to tell the honest God truth. Fifty Cat Williams, um, 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 David Chappelle, people like that. Then you got all these iffies, you know, Jay Z, Puffy. And Oprah and all these people that with Steve Harvey, they would dance to the tune for that money. Something have to happen in your mind that says, I got enough money for my family that in the next family, we can just keep on the entertainment and doing um doing our our art. Our art should carry us after you get past 20 million, so to speak. I don't know. Everybody got a number. But there's no way in the world you're going to sit there and um, if you're gay, you gay, man. I ain't got nothing against that. But uh, why hide it? That's the only thing I'm thinking about, man. Why? If you're gay, you go both ways. 
you know, uh, don't bring that mess around here, man. God, Lee Moses. I saw a little boo-boo the other day. I saw a little honey female. I got to say that these days that I kind of got the hats for. So I'm just going to try to hook up with her a little bit. Anyway, y'all take it light. Take it slow. Tell them I crossed. Hold you, son. Peace out.